So, uh, Dr. Yuroko Akiyama is a gerontologist. She's Professor Emeritus at the University of Tokyo and the former Vice President of Science Council of Japan. Professor Akiyama has conducted a number of cross-national surveys and is widely recognized as an expert on issues of global aging. She's known for the long-running research on the elderly in Japan, tracking the aging patterns of approximately 6,000 Japanese elderly for 30 years. Recently, she initiated social experiment projects that pioneer a redesigned of communities to meet the needs of the highly aged society and Kamakura as a living lab, as a platform for co-creation among users, industry, government, and academia. She started at the Institute of Gerontology at the University of Tokyo in uh, 2006. Uh, Professor Akiyama received her PhD in psychology from the University of Illinois in the United States, and also spent a number of years at the University of Michigan, I happen to know, working with us at the Life Course Development Program. Welcome, Yuroko. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Tony. Well, I mean, I'm grateful, first of all, I'm grateful to Tony and the Frosso for organizing this inspiring webinar. And this is a quite rare um, opportunity of delivering a speech to the international audience from the living room of my house. <laughs> and now it's 10 o'clock at night in Japan, and it's dark outside. But I have an image of myself, I mean, overlooking the blue sky and beautiful ocean from the podium and the island of Rhodes, Greece. And uh, we all will be there in 2022. And I have been working with people at the later stage of life. And we just, I mean, uh, started online interview for finding out how COVID-19 affects the life of seniors. But so, I mean, I don't have enough data to report the interview results yet. So for now, I mean, I'll share with you the kind of I mean, uh, the observation or just impression from the first several interviews. And after that, I mean, I'll talk about the topic I originally planned. From uh, the initial, I mean, uh, the online interviews, I mean, uh, the, uh, I kind of came up with I mean, uh, the following three observations. The first observation is seniors are resilient. They survived various kinds of disasters in the past and accumulated wisdom to deal with different situations. So comparing with the younger generations, they have the ability to withstand the stress or disruption and stay calm and maintain everyday life. And the second observation is uh, this time, they were forced to change the mode of communication. And many of them switched to online, com on online communication, the mostly Zoom, and realized they are capable of handling ICT device and felt empowered. And now they appear more open and interested in new technology such as social robots or, I mean, robot companion, just, I mean, Angelo mentioned, okay? And this is uh, important to a country like Japan, where the shortage of manpower for elderly care is a serious issue. The third observation is, I mean, we are particularly interested in how COVID-19 affected exchange of social support expectation and actual behavior of receiving and providing emotional support and instrumental support. But so far, we haven't seen any change. And we continue uh, the online interviews and plan to uh, use other methods, I mean, to collect the data when they became possible. And I report the result in another occasion, okay? Okay, let me uh, the start uh, the, uh, my presentation about I mean, challenges and opportunities in aged society. Well, I will start with a brief description of the background. Uh, population aging is a global phenomenon and Japan is one of the front runners of rapidly aging society. The average life expectancy of Japanese women is now 87 years, 
and 81 years for men. And the current total fertility rate is 1.43. As a result, 28% of the Japanese population, one of four persons in Japan is age 65 and older. The total population started to decline in 2010. And you, as you see, the working age population has been steadily decreasing, but the population age 65 and older, particularly age uh, 75 and all, older are increasing. This, is, uh, this slide shows me old age dependency ratios. In 1965, 55 years ago, there was 9.1 person to support one older person. Now the ratio is uh, the one to 2.4, and we're expecting the ratio will become almost one to one in 2050. Obviously, I uh, will not be able to sustain the social security system and the national economy as well. Social welfare spending, uh, spending for uh, pension, health care, and long-term care has been steadily increasing. And although this is an important issue, I mean, I will not focus on macroeconomic issues today. In year 2030, uh, 10 years from now, it is predicted 20% of the population is 65 and older are demented, and 45% will be living alone. This is a new phenomenon in Japan and in Asia in general. We have been conducting a panel survey following about 6,000 Japanese aged 60 and older, basically every three years since 1987, looking at the changes in major domains of their lives with increasing age, health, economic status, and social relations. Okay, these are some of the, uh, the uh, this, uh, this is a face-to-face -face interview. And uh, now we have nine waves of data for 30 years, okay? And using ADL and IADL limitations, we uh, looked at the changes in independent living with increasing age. It is functional independence, a key concept of WHO definition of healthy aging. This is a scoring guideline. We gave scores three to people who have no ADL and IADL limitations. We gave score two to those with no ADL limitations but need assistance for IADL. Score one is for those who need assistance for both ADL and IADL. Zeros are dead. Using the latent class analysis model, we found three typical patterns of health change among men. The point I want to make in this graph is a, the red line. 70% of men stayed functionally independent until mid 70s, and then their health gradually declined and re required some assistance. This is um, uh, the similar graph for women. 70% of men and almost 90% of women, uh, altogether 80% of Japanese older persons start losing physical independence in the mid 70s. The, uh, the population age 75 and older is rapidly increasing and double in the next 10 years. So these trajectories pose a serious problem. The academic community can make contribution uh, mainly in three years, uh, three main areas. Biomedical research, uh, improving living environment and individual life cycle. Universities and other research institutions are main force in, the medical in uh, biomedical I mean, research. Because I focus on the next two areas today, I use a different color for biomedical research, but it is obviously the very important and fast evolving field. 
There is a great deal of accumulation of the research on living environment and individual lifestyles as well. But our success in actually improving the living environment and the people's lifestyle are still limited. For example, the annual health checkup rate of non-working women in Japan is less than 20%. Although smoking is declining, sitting, which has emerged as independent risk factor for health, is steeply increasing, particularly under the restriction by COVID-19. Problems with diet and sleep were widespread and show little signs of improving. For improving the living environment and people's lifestyle, we already know what the what issues are, but we need now a solution and action. In my view, uh, one viable approach from the academic community is uh, action research. The purpose of action research is to solve a particular problem and to produce guidelines for best practice. It is a participatory research in collaboration with multi-stakeholders, such as government, industry, various organizations such as NPOs, physicians association, and certainly citizens. It takes a spiral uh, steps. Each step is composed of PCA cycle, that is planning, action, and fact-finding about the result of the action. University can offer a platform for action research. The collaboration of multi-stakeholders who, who jointly seek solutions to a particular issue. It will turn out to be a platform for open innovations. Action research is a promising research method, but still at the formative stage. We need to work on further developing action research as a rigorous scientific research method. Uh, to address various issues in the living uh, the, uh, environment, uh, Institute of Gerontology at the University of Tokyo launched a social experiment in a community. The existing infrastructure of communities was built when the population was much younger. We need to redesign both hard and soft infrastructure of communities. We are trying to redesign communities for meeting the needs of a highly aged society. We want to build communities where people could live for 100 years, staying healthy, active, connected, and live with a sense of security. This is not a retirement community. It is an ordinary community for people of all ages. As this is a social experiment, we evaluate the effects of our intervention at individual level, community level, and costs. And we make policy recommendations based on scientific evidence. This is an overview of a project. It requires considerable scientific and social innovation. Okay, these are uh, major projects we are now working on. We have two experimental sites, one in the metropolitan area, 30 kilometers away from Tokyo, and the other in the rural area. We choose, uh, we chose, I mean, other two uh, quite ordinary communities so that they can be helpful for other communities in re redesigning their communities. The following slides illustrate major projects we are now working on in Kashiwa, the urban community. The first project is workplaces for the second life. We live longer and we work longer. As you might remember, this is the title of the OECD report published in 2005. We are not only live longer, but also live healthier. 
This slide compares the usual walking speed of people in the same age groups between 1992 and 2002. This is a, a bit I mean, old data, but the similar uh, the uh, improvement of physical abilities I mean, just continue improving. And it shows all the persons in 2002 were 11 years younger than their counterparts in 1992. In other words, 75 years old person in 2002 was walking in the same speed as 64 years old person in 1992 was walking. Three years ago, a Japanese association of geriatric and gerontology made official pronouncement to raise the definition of old age from 65 to 75 years old. Two years ago, we conducted a survey asking 5,000 people aged 50 to 64, that is kind of the next generation of seniors, what they want to do after age 65. Number one, uh, over half of the respondents mentioned they, would, uh, they want to work full-time or part-time. Number two was learning. This is a graph in the report published by Ministry of Health and uh, Labor and Welfare. It shows the labor participation rate of seniors age 65 and older and their medical care expenditure by prefecture, like I mean province, have moderate correlation. So expansion of job opportunities for seniors is essential to ensure sustainability of the society to maintain and enhance the uh, labor force, social security, uh, finance, and economic uh, development. The prediction of uh, labor demands and supply in 2030 looks bleak. We lose 8.45 million workers in the next 10 years. Seniors to be workers in producers. Social security benefits exceed 1 trillion Japanese yen. Seniors need to be taxpayers and promote health and contain medical care and cost by working. The expansion of a senior market is also important. Seniors will be active consumers. This is an important issue at the societal level, and there are obviously a number of macro policy issues to address. People wish to work even after age 65, and work is good for health. So we started a project called Workplaces for the Second Life. Kasira City, uh, the urban site, it's a typical uh, bed town of Tokyo. A huge number of baby boomers who commuted to work in Tokyo retired and came back to this community. We are creating age-friendly workplaces and flexible scheme of employment suitable for the second life. So far, we created nine workplaces, three were in agriculture, two workplaces are food related, and the others are in the field of education and personal care. All workplaces are operated by business owners uh, in the private sectors, and the wage varies depending on the new, uh, nature of work, but the minimum wage is guaranteed for all jobs. Using work sharing, we develop a flexible employment scheme for both employers and uh, senior workers. Older persons decide when and how long they work. Uh, these are senior workers at work. Uh, they are working at various I mean, places like a farm and uh, after school I mean, uh, program and uh, also uh, it's a nursing home. 
It is essential for senior workers to learn the basic ICT skill for participating in the work sharing group. We evaluate the effects of working after retirement age at individual level and the community level. There are some of the indicators here, and we like to see more smile, I mean, uh, after work. And using these devices, we assess physical abilities, cognitive abilities, and the social interactions before they start working six months, 12 months, 18 months later. We are still collecting data but the preliminary analysis results show the positive effects of working. Uh, based on the scientific evidence from a community experiment, we made a policy recommendations to the national government, Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare. Based on our policy recommendations, in 2017, the legislation was passed at National Diet to institutionalize the program. This is the guidebook we published for disseminating the program to other communities. Now it is spreading throughout the country. These are photos of various work processes in different model sites, I mean, uh, across the country. Seniors' labor force participation is essential for sustainability of social security system and economy as well. We need to reform the pension system and to reduce various barriers at workplaces and enhance seniors' employability. And certainly, we need to combat against ageism. We also test various uh, products which provide uh, older workers with safe and productive work environment. This is a simple power assist device for reducing the stress on the lower back in uh, farming and nursing care developed by Hokkaido University and the Mitsubishi Electric Company. We are now working on a platform for job matching assisted by AI with a major employment agency, Recruit and IBM Japan. For a long time, we made individual and collective efforts to extend life expectancy. When the average life expectancy approached 80 years, the focus shifted to the extension of healthy life expectancy. Now we are about to seek the extension of years being engaged in the society, the extension of engaged life expectancy. Last year, we set up October 1st as a day of a lifelong active society. Okay, uh, the next project is frailty uh, prevention. In the highly aged society, frailty is a dominant cause of disability. We promote frailty prevention in the community. We try to raise awareness of physical frailty, cognitive frailty, and a social frailty. And this is a large scale longitudinal cohort study. Trained active seniors in green shirt participate as staff members in frailty checkup in communities. Preliminary analysis of the data uh, uh, indica indicates the social frailty often precedes physical frailty and cognitive frailty. Therefore, social engagement is an important factor to prevent frailty. These are some of the frailty prevention activity 
you know, across the country. Well, I mean, you see them in the bike, I mean, called the public bike, I mean, uh, the town, but this is, I mean, for the kind of public uh, walker, uh, just uh, located in several places in the city. And uh, so even if, I mean, you're afraid, you get up the house and walk around the town by using this public walker. It's a community restaurant and a construction. Because I mean, now uh, many older people are living alone and also young people too. So this is a kind of community restaurant. People get together and eat together and talk together. And also, I mean, this place higher, I mean, uh, uh, older people. Okay, and um, But transportation is a big issue for all the persons to stay safe and active, particularly uh, the people aged 75 and older. I mean, uh, the transportation is a big issue. In collaboration with several companies, such as Toyota, we are working on alternative means of transportation in the community. We maximally uh, utilize the existing ICT to reach out for people to stay healthy, safe, and connected. We also pursue technological innovations and test new technology in the community. I think, I mean, this, uh, uh, there are a lot of, I mean, uh, the, we lost many lives and also the big impact uh, on our uh, economy, I mean, uh, by COVID-19. Uh, but uh, the, one good thing is just promote this mean uh, the uh, uh, usage of ICT. I think now many people I mean are you working at home using uh, the online I mean uh, the uh, communication and also uh, 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 now online kind of mean uh, medical care. I mean uh, it's uh, more uh, widespread than before. Okay, and uh, this kind of social experiment requires not only the collaboration of researchers in different disciplines, but also full collaboration with local governments, healthcare institutions, NPOs, business community, and the residents. Action research is a promising research method in gerontology, but as I mentioned, still in the formative stage. We need to work on further developing action research as a scientific research method. Two years ago, we published an introductory book of action research in aging society in Japanese. I hope action research gets citizenship in gerontological and lifespan developmental research and the contribute to solutions for formidable challenges in the rapidly aging society. We formed the University Industry Consortium on Gerontology in 2009. The consortium provides a platform for academic ideas and the business ideas joining together to produce new values and solutions for the formidable challenges we face in the next 10 years. So far, 98 uh, Japanese and international enterprises participated in the consortium. These are some of the names. But I am a developmental psychologist by training. Now, market research or business in general is not my expertise. But tracking the lives of 6,000 older pe persons for 30 years, I have a strong feelings the needs of a large portion of the older population have not been met. It seems the industry is targeted to a relatively small segment of the older population, frail and wealthy people in the two segments, small segment in both sides. And the large majority of the older population is in the middle segment. 
Persons age 65 and older are diverse. Persons in the 60s and those in the 90s are quite different. We can't treat the population age 65 and older as one entity. There seems to be roughly three phases in the lives after age 65. At the first stage, seniors wish to explore a new life and new opportunities after retirement. Particularly, the baby boomers are the first generation who recognize they have 20 or 30 more years ahead and make a plan for the second life. They wish to explore many options. I often advise business community, you should not wait until seniors tell you what they want. Rather, you should propose various attractive new life design and lifestyles, lifestyles with products and services. You need to be proactive. This is certainly a challenge. Unlike two years old, the older population is diverse in health, economic status, and values, and lifestyle. Therefore, it is not easy to figure out the volume of needs in the silver market. Nevertheless, given a huge volume of the population age 65 and older, even a small portion of older people would create a good market. There appear to be untapped business chance in the middle segment, 80% of the older population. At the second stage, the main goal of seniors is to stay healthy and independent and maintain their daily living. This is particularly true for the people aged 75 and older. They wish they'll be doing what they are doing today, such as taking a walk after dinner, driving to the grocery store, going to hot spring with friends, a month later, a year later, and hopefully 10 years later as well. They do not want to give up favorite food because it is too tough to chew. I wonder why they have to give up. We have technology. The baby boomers who are now at the first stage are the first generation who make plan for their second and the third stages. In order to maintain independence and their lifestyles, they are willing to invest and spend the money. As I mentioned, so far, the main target of industry has been a senior at the third stage to meet their needs of healthcare and long-term care. Also, I would like to add through all three are stages, seniors want to enjoy their life even at the end of life. Meeting these needs of seniors, uh, these, uh, the needs of seniors I mean, are required technological and social innovations. So 100 year life society is a gold mine of innovation. There are many issues we need to solve. Innovation ecosystem looks like this. I'm not going into this, I mean, because I, uh, I have five more minutes probably. And um, one strategy is um, to create a platform for open innovation, co-creation by multi-stakeholders such as users, industry, acad academia, and the government. In my view, this is a crucially important infrastructure for promoting technological and social innovations. We recently launched a living lab in Kamakura, a city 50 kilometers away from Tokyo. We call it Kamakura Living Lab. As you may know, a living lab is a user-centered open innovation platform within a public-private people partnership. It goes through the process of co-creation exploration, experimentation, and evaluation of innov innovative ideas, concepts, 
and the related technological artifacts in the real life use cases. Such use cases involve user communities, not only as observed or subjects, but also as a source of creation. This is the front page of the leaflet explaining Living Lab, easy to understand, which we distributed to all households in the user community in Kamakura City. The core member of the Quadruple Helix platform for open innovation are Kamakura citizens, Kamakura city government, university industry consortium companies, and the University of Tokyo. These are the photos from the kickoff events we held two years ago. Our goal for the first two years uh, consolidating Quadruple Helix uh, uh, ecosystem for open innovation and developing Living Lab scheme suitable in the Japanese context and building sustainable business model and forming Transnational Living Lab. We started Transnational Living Lab with Living Lab in Sweden. This is a picture of King and Queen of Sweden visiting Kamakura Living Lab in April last year. This is my final slide. I mean, our ultimate goal is to make linkages among longevity, health, and wealth, which I believe is the utmost challenge in this rapidly aging world. Population aging is a global phenomenon. By taking up enormous challenges and exploring new opportunities in the aging society and building sustainable society together is our global goal. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Yoroko. I am, there we go. Uh, that was fascinating. I know a lot about this already, but I'm very pleased to see how you've been um, moving things along. What I like best about this is the positiveness of it. It's so proactive. Um, we have a couple of questions coming in. Um, so, this person is writing from Africa, and he says that they have, in fact, the opposite situation in Africa. Um, and he would like to know why the Japanese authorities shift the old age from 65 to 75. Is it because of the fact that there is not enough young people to work for the economic uh, benefit, or just because the old people want to work instead of living without doing uh, much since they are still able to work and are also healthy and yet able to be active for more years. I think I know the answer to that, but I take it. Do you understand the question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, uh, yes, I mean, uh, the, but I think the mean, uh, to the mean, uh, the pronunciation by, I mean, association of uh, geriatrics and gerontology raising, I mean, the, uh, a definition, of old, a definition of old age from 65 to 75. I think, I mean, uh, the um, most supportive people are seniors. They liked it, okay? Because now, I mean, people are, uh, uh, people are, are healthier and better educated. Almost, I mean, very few people feel I'm old in 60s at age 65, I mean, almost no one, I mean, think I'm an old person, okay? Yeah. And so they really kind of welcome this mean pronunciation with raising the definition from 65 to 75, okay? And really that is kind of really match the fact they feel. And also from uh, the, uh, the society level, yes, I think, I mean, uh, the, um, uh, the retirement age 65, I mean, uh, was set when the I mean, average uh, life expectancy was probably 75 or 80. Now we're living at 100. 
and uh, the uh, I think we can't really I mean retire at age 65 and depend on the rest of their life on to the uh, younger people and we need we are capable and also we need to work yeah, yeah. I completely agree um, I had a couple of questions too um, so two questions one was very factually based. I'm fascinated by the increase in walking speed. And that's really very interesting. So do you attribute that to the fact that people are just healthier? Not just healthier, but healthier? Or is there a, is there a targeted intervention there? I mean, that's a wonderful finding that I think shows a lot of promise to people who think that this is just a one way downward slope. And then a completely different question, but I'll ask it while I have your attention. Um, about the community restaurant, that's a very interesting idea, and I think it's a very natural way of promoting a lot of good things. When we did an intervention in California, we actually, uh, one of the things we did was create, even within a, a, a senior housing, a, a community dinner experience so people would come. But one of the things that really influenced it was that we offered those dinners for free. So, but this is a restaurant, so people pay. So I'm wondering, is there a, a problem with who can afford to go to a restaurant every night? Or is it some kind of a, uh, a setup where people kind of buy into it for a relatively cheap price? Or is it government paid or what? Okay. The about the first question and uh, where I mean uh, the improvement in the physical in abilities, not only walking speed. I think I mean the how to say grips, strength of grips, and I mean many other indicators of I mean uh, the physical abilities showing the very similar uh, improvement in uh, uh, for all age group. I mean means I mean sixties and seventies, eighties. I mean uh, so I mean. Uh, and I think, I mean, uh, the, the reason is, I mean, why improving? I think it's a combination of many reasons, probably. And uh, uh, I think the, the lifestyle I mean, changed. I mean, uh, and also, yes, I mean, I think more people are doing exercise and I mean, just to take care of them, I mean, uh, themselves. And uh, so, well, yes, they're helping. Okay. Yeah, yeah, everything, and I think uh, also very careful about the I mean, food, what they eat. Okay, yeah. and the um, community regarding community restaurant. This is my favorite projects, and um, and actually, I think I mean the uh, the residents, the community are really looking forward to yeah. opening of the community restaurant. And this is, I mean, uh, the, well, I mean, we can run this kind of restaurant in many ways, just like, like I mean, public, I mean, uh, restaurant, I mean, uh, supported by the government. That is one way. But I think, I mean, uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, we, our kind of I mean, has the policy is, I mean, uh, I mean uh, is I think we do most of things in private sector. Okay. Uh -huh. so, so, are people just wealthier in Japan? Because I can't, this will work in some neighborhoods in the US, but not others. Yes, I um, mean, you know, the, okay, let, let me just talk about this restaurant. It's just, I mean, uh, the um, uh, private, I mean, the just uh, uh, young couple run this restaurant. I mean, now we are planning stage. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the, I think, I mean, uh, the, uh, they uh, provide, I mean, three meals, okay, and even the breakfast, they serve breakfast as well at a reasonable price. And also well balanced, I mean, uh, you know, the nutrition and the things. And also this is a kind of gathering place. And uh, so uh, the even, I mean, uh, the single old men feel comfortable to come in and I mean, uh, eat and talk. Okay. And uh, the also people can get me information here, and the, so there is a kind of I meaning uh, the uh, uh, some I mean uh, uh, IT platform I mean uh, to get them information or all yeah. those things. And, the, no, so, I and uh, but also we do have I mean uh, the uh, uh, now it's very popular for uh, the 
uh, dining for children with women or the uh, uh, low income families, particularly. And now becoming, this is not only for children, just everyone are welcome, okay? And so, uh, and also, if you can pay, you can pay. And if you can't, you, you don't ah, have to. And that's kind of thing. Uh, the, uh, invite, uh, all the people are invited too. Okay? So it's a kind of mix of different kinds of me place. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. And you know, um, I can ar I can under I can imagine an argument which says this is actually cost effective because you can have people eating better, you have them getting out and exercising to get there, you have more social activity, all of which is cost effective and keeps them healthier. So it's very yeah, and also perfect. the I mean, the one another requirement is I mean employee senior workers, so yeah. all the people can work there. Yeah. It does require that it's a walkable town because like, if you live, yes. it does oh, require right. that it's a walkable town because, you know, if you lived out in the country or in a city that where you have to take a car everywhere, it's not, it's, it's not as helpful. But, you know, there was a question here. Let me see if I can find it about transportation. Uh, can we use technology like alternative transportation can to minimize lifespan or prolong or to pro or to prolong life since I saw in your other slides that seniors who use to walk um, are able to stay physically active and live longer. So I guess the bottom line of that question is can we use technology to improve transportation to provide an alternative transportation? Yes, certainly. But I think the question is I mean uh, the uh, uh, the uh, having tra uh, alternative transportation is really good for health. Is that a uh, question or not? Uh, Certainly, I mean, technology and uh, alternative transportation, yeah. right? Yeah, I think so, because those alternative transportations will provide all those benefits we were just talking about to keep people walking and staying yeah. active physically and yes. therefore living longer. Yes, I think so. I, I think it's mean uh, the uh, mobility is very, very important for all the people if you talk with all the person, right? I mean, yeah. uh, and uh, so, I mean, once you, I mean, stop driving on car, I mean, many people stay home. And uh, uh, so it's, uh, I think, I mean, uh, the, this is one of the area we are really want to work on. I mean, uh, the, so, uh, the uh, even if you don't drive, I mean, uh, the, you can go to I mean, uh, the uh, uh, clinic and also grocery store and visit friends. And I mean, I think I mean, uh, the, uh, just I mean, uh, the, uh, you can go to anywhere you want. That is very, very important yeah. for getting out of the house and do something I mean, uh, active. It's, it's good for physical health and also psychological health. I agree. Okay, uh, we have a question from Jackie Smith, who I'm sure you remember. Uh, Jackie asks, uh, she thanks you for an inspiring talk and your proposal for multi-system action. Many baby boomers uh, likely agree, but how can this be translated to change the medical system to move to preventive medicine from age 45 onwards? And also to involve younger adults to change societal attitudes and negative age stereotypes about aging. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is very good. I mean, uh, the kind of uh, comments on the questions. I mean, uh, where, I mean, last year, I really kind of mean, uh, uh, found, I mean, the, the kind of mean, uh, the trend is moving. I think, I mean, uh, the, uh, well, I mean, so far we kind of focus on age, I mean, older people because, I mean, uh, the, those, I mean, uh, the, just, I mean, particularly in Japan, I mean, just suddenly, I mean, we see, I mean, uh, the one fourth of the population is age 65 and older. But I think, I mean, uh, uh, I think we can really, to solve the issue in, uh, in old age, we have to start working from the beginning of the life, the whole lifespan. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, uh, the, we try to incorporate young people and also the, we are now kind of try to redesign the community to really uh, the, uh, 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 
I mean, how to say, I mean, uh, the meet the needs of, I mean, people at different age groups, I mean, even children. And uh, now we ask, I mean, the, uh, the kind of, I mean, we, we talked about, I mean, the rede redesigning the, I mean, uh, the town. I mean, this is not in Kashiro, many other places, okay? And we include, I mean, people from all ages. And uh, the, uh, then we kind of draw um, a kind of picture, okay? And the, in uh, year 2030 or 40, okay, this town will be like this. Okay, then uh, the, everyone gets excited and the children and all the people and the children wants to add soccer field here or something like here and all the people <laughs> add something here or that. Okay, and then, I mean, people just get excited. Wow, I want to live in a town like this. Okay, and so this is the way we should go. And uh, the, uh, so, I mean, uh, the, uh, we really, uh, I mean, uh, should redesign community for the people for all ages, not I mean, particularly focused on old age. Yeah. Uh, we know that does a lot of good in terms of attitudes as well <coughs> of young people about old people. We have a question about, are there homes for the aged in Japan and how are they managed? Yes. I mean, uh, the, uh, yeah, we have, I mean, uh, are you talking about nursing homes, right? Yeah, I think that's what she means. Yes, uh, yes, we have, I mean, public nursing homes and also private. And I think, I mean, about 5% uh, of all the people uh, live in uh, the nursing home. But I mean, the policy of the national government, I mean, uh, is kind of aging in place. So, I mean, uh, uh, people wants to stay home. I mean, uh, so, I mean, uh, the, I mean, still, I think, we, of course, we need, I mean, nursing homes, but, I mean, uh, the, the policies like, I mean, community-based health care and community-based something, and the transportation is one issue. It, even if you don't drive, I mean, you can move. It, you can go anywhere. Right. Right. You can stay. Yeah. Yeah, but, okay. I mean, yeah, we do have nursing homes, yes. Okay, we have a couple more questions. Uh, this person says that their parents are proactive and role models. Is it that the batch of people who are presently 65 plus have been uncluttered on many things that occupy too much of, young, of the younger generation's time? Is simplicity a positive contributor to good overall healthy among the elderly now? And not related, but perhaps you could address as well, this person, another person is wondering about spirituality or religion, if it plays any role in old age wellness. What's your take? Well, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I can answer the second question, but I mean, the first question, what is, uh, would you tell me again? I mean, the first question. They wanna know if the reason older people are doing, are, are doing well, are our role models are really engaged in these positive activities. Is it because their life is less cluttered by the things that younger people spend all their time on? Uh, is simplicity of life a positive contributor to good overall? And that's what's improving their health. And I, I think that question might be inspired by the fact that we see many changes with people now in lockdown or sheltering in place and there is a, a greater simplicity to life. So they're focusing, they're better able to focus on some, some things. Not sure, but maybe. Uh, yeah. Yes, I, yeah, I think, yeah, that is, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I have similar observations. I mean, uh, the, I don't have any data. I mean, uh, I have not studied, but just, I mean, uh, the uh, observing uh, the, uh, the life of all the person in, under this, I mean, un, the COVID-19, a lot of restrictions. I think, I mean, uh, the, they are handling quite well. I mean, uh, and uh, I don't know if uh, their life is simple or not, but uh, the, I, uh, yeah, but it's, uh, I think uh, <laughs> this clutter, yeah, <laughs> that's probably so. Okay, and uh, the um, I'm uh, sorry, I mean, I don't really answer, but I mean, I think that is um, my observation. 
and uh, the religion, I mean, uh, the, uh, well, I mean, uh, the, uh, in Japan, I mean, uh, the uh, uh, religion is uh, not, I mean, it's a, uh, uh, kind of, I mean, uh, many people, I mean, uh, do not practice really religious, I mean, uh, things, I mean, regularly, like, I mean, uh, I mean, very, very few people go to uh, the church or uh, temple or whatever, I mean, uh, the, uh, regularly, okay? Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know how much religion affect the uh, well-being of all the persons in Japan, but I think we underestimate the, uh, the uh, impact or I mean, effects of religion, I mean, uh, on uh, the well-being of other persons. I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, it's more kind of I mean, subtle. I think, uh, I, I think because, I mean, in the everyday life, I mean, there is, I mean, it, to, it used to be, I mean, the, the Buddhist country. And I think, I mean, uh, we don't practice any, we don't read, I mean, the script or uh, we don't go to <coughs> temple I mean, every week or every month. But I think I mean, uh, the, um, the religion is I mean, kind of I mean, uh, the, um, a part of the, our lives. And so uh, it's, dif it's difficult to assess the uh, impact of religion on the well-being of the person. But certainly it is, I think. Uh, yeah, that's so interesting because in some places, religion plays such a, such a big part in people's lives, but in other places, not, not very much. Okay, uh, I have a couple of more questions. Let's see if I can. So one person asks, if older people are still working, then why do they need a community restaurant? I guess it is to be in more con in contact, to have social interaction with, uh, with other people, young people and older people. And so their desire to work after 65, 75, maybe just a way to stay in touch with the community. That's one comment and uh, question. Another is just how does family support help in the resilience and life expectancy of um, older people? And then this is unrelated, but maybe you could get to it as well. Oops, we're running out of time. Uh, what role did the university play in establishing the Living Lab? And what would be your advice to get started in such an, an initiative? So we only have like two more minutes. So pick one and be as quick as you can. Well, okay. Uh, I mean, I might just uh, go from the, I mean, the last question. I think, I mean, uh, the, well, it's a cause of helix. So I think the living lab, I think, requires, I mean, the, uh, the user community, like citizens and government, uh, the local government particularly, and the industry and the university. And in my experience, there are many uh, living lab in the European country and also US and also Japan. But I think, I mean, uh, the, um, when they mean university, I mean, provide a platform. That's for all stakeholders, easy to get in, okay? Uh -huh. So I think that is, I mean, uh, the, uh, I, I mean, just looking at, I mean, other, uh, the uh, cases, I think that is, I think, I mean, uh, uh, university play a kind of significant role as providing platform, okay? To just invite other stakeholders, I mean. Uh, right. And, um, the second one. Get, so the other one was does family support help in the resilience and life expectancy of the aged? Yes. Well, I mean, uh, the, in Japan, traditionally, I mean, all the people lived with uh, the uh, children's uh, family. But now, I mean, uh, the, just like me, other country, I mean, uh, uh, many people, I mean, uh, they live independently, all the people live independently and wish to live independently. And still, I think we are searching the, the best way to support each other. But I think, I mean, the family really support, I mean, all the people in Japan as well, but the kind of, I mean, still kind of, I mean, exploring other way yeah. to do, particularly now women are working. I mean, uh, yeah. Right. Revolution in Japan. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. I thank you, Dr. Akiyama, and you, Dr. Angel Kanjolosi. Um, these were wonderful talks, very inspirational, so different, and yet so much uh, addressing issues of human development, which thank is you. what we care about here at ISSBD.